हे एवरी वन अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू माई सेल्फ नेहा गुप्ता यू मेंट ऑफ अ करंट अफेयर्स सो लेट्स बिगिन टूडेज क्लास बट बिफोर बिगनिंग लेट मी रिमाइंड यू ऑफ द अनाउंसमेंट दैट इज कमिंग ऑन इलेवन डिसम्बर सो वी हैव अ स्पेसिफिक लॉन्च ऑन दिस डेट आई होप यू आर गोइंग टू स्टे ट्यून टू आर चैनल टू नो वॉट इज डेट बिकॉज दैट इज अ बिग सरप्राइज फॉर ऑल द स्टूडेंट हु आर वेटिंग फॉर दिस सो येस गाइज वी आर कमिंग अप विद your demanded duck so you have to wait till this date and if you want to know more about it you need to stay tuned to our channel and wait for the notification so uh, this is the time table for live sessions if you are not aware about the courses that we offer so let me inform you that we provide you with the live courses for all the th- uh, three examinations okay so here you can clearly see the time table of it and if you want to uh, see the demo of these courses so we give you the full access for the course of we give you the full access of the course for one day okay so you have the full access you can watch the videos you can download the pdf read the pdf attempt the quiz whatever you want to do you have one day so you can evaluate the course and if you want then you can also purchase it now this is the mobile application uh, whatever you are not finding on any other website you are going to get it on our mobile application for example the past years of rs abhi and abhi so these past years in and the updates about the examination everything is there on the mobile application so you can download it from the google play store now let's begin with the questions so first question is which country <coughs> is providing rupees 1500 crore loan to india for from its economic development cooperation fund for installing the intelligent transport system on nagpur mumbai super communication expressway project so here the right answer is republic of korea so what has happened india and south korea both of them have collaborated and in this collaboration south korea is going to provide india rupees 1500 crore but remember it is a loan and that loan is given from a specific fund so that fund is economic <coughs> development cooperation fund of south korea okay so from this fund this much loan will be given to establish the intelligent transport system on this nagpur mumbai super communication expressway project okay now what would be the benefit of this system it is very easy to understand from its name itself intelligent transport system so it is going to manage the traffic so that the transportation can be run smoothly okay so that's the basic idea <clears throat> moving ahead republic of korea was designated as india's official development assistance partner back in the year 2016 only so from then onwards india and south korea are collaborating for different kinds of development projects such as this okay the intelligent transport system one more fact is that this economic development cooperation fund was established in 1987 by the republic of korea uh, to provide the assistance to the different countries so that is also an important fact that all of you should be aware of. now we are talking about south korea so <coughs> seoul is the capital of south korea and won is the currency okay seoul go world plastic surgery capital bhi kaha jata hai because sabse zyada plastic surgeries yahi pe ki jati hai yahan ki zyada tar actresses plastic surgery karate aur bahar se bhi log aate hain yahan pe plastic surgery karane ke liye theek hai so that is an important important fact now guys there is a specific name to the border of north korea and south korea can any one of you tell me that in the comment section below this is your task question number 2 is recently uttar pradesh chief minister yogi adityanath launched the one district one sport scheme on the lines of the highly successful one district one product scheme of the government how many districts are present in the state <coughs> so guys 75 is the right answer it is a coincidence that we are celebrating the azadi ka amrit mahotsav 75 years to our independence and coincidentally uttar pradesh also has 75 districts but by the way i hope you are aware that this is the highest number of district that any state in india has so 
तो उत्तर प्रदेश हैज द हाईएस्ट नंबर ऑफ डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स इसीलिए शायद कहा जाता है कि राजपथ का रास्ता उत्तर प्रदेश और बिहार से होकर निकलता है बिकॉज सबसे ज्यादा वोट यहीं से डलता है बिकॉज इट इज द मोस्ट पॉपुलर स्टेट इन द एंटायर कंट्री सो डू रिमेंबर सेवेंटी फाइव डिस्ट्रिक्ट नाउ वट इज गोइंग टू हैपन इन दिस की फ्रॉम ईच डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन स्पोर्ट विल बी सिलेक्टेड एंड दैट स्पोर्ट और the people who are involved in that sport will be given acknowledgement encouragement and promotion by the government so that the sport can be increased okay so that uh, sports adoption can be increased people can become more and more fit and we can tap the talent sports talent at an early age through these competitions and through this scheme okay so that's the basic idea now i hope you are clear about the scheme one district one sport. Now, guys, <clears throat> this one district, one product scheme. I hope you know about it. You have an idea about it. It basically aims to promote the agricultural products, agricultural and rural products, uh, so that like handicrafts also. So, uh, the majority of the products which are covered in the one district, one product are the agricultural products. Okay. So, what happens in this one district, one pro product scheme? one product from each district is selected and then that product is given every kind of encouragement so that the economy of the district can also be developed because of that product and that product in itself gets the market validation because of its geographic origin so it in a way works like a geographic uh, indication tag like the gi tag okay so that is the scheme now one district one product scheme was initially launched by the uttar pradesh government and then after seeing its success the central government adopted it and implemented it panly so now your task is to tell me that which ministry of the union is implementing this scheme at the national level okay now if we talk about this one district one product scheme sorry one district one sport scheme bar bar one district se one product hi dimag mein aata hai to aisi confusion aap paper mein mat karna ठीक है यहाँ तो हो गई हो गई पर पेपर में ध्यान से क्वेश्चन को पढ़ना है कि किसके बारे में बात की जा रही है वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन स्पोर्ट या वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन प्रोडक्ट ओके सो वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन स्पोर्ट स्कीम जो है वी हैव डिस्कस दैट इज इट हैज बीन लॉन्च टू प्रमोट स्पोर्ट्स नाउ लेट्स लुक एट द स्पोर्ट एंड द रिस्पेक्टिव डिस्ट्रिक्ट so here what is written it is just written that it is not only going to provide the opportunity to the sports person it is also build a sport culture in the districts and also give encouragement to the various i would say hidden sports or dying sports okay traditional sports like malakhamb uh, wrestling and various other sports are also going to get promotion through the team now here we have the <coughs> sports and districts okay which have been identified under this scheme so table tennis from agra kanpur boxing from bulandshahar bulandshahar or kushinagar swimming from pilibhit lawn tennis from prayagraj and this list go on like this okay so here <clears throat> what you need to remember you just need to remember only the important districts for example pilibhit here there is a tiger reserve okay pilibhit tiger reserve so you need to remember the name of this district and the sport with it uh, with which it has been associated then prayagraj is a very important district alabad is ka purana naam tha and this is the place where ganga yamuna saraswati confluent okay because saraswati is not present as of now but ganga and yamuna still make the confluence at this place that is why it has been named prayagraj from allahabad okay so prayagraj is an important district remember lawn tennis has been associated with it then we have this gautam buddh nagar so here jevar airport is being developed in collaboration with switzerland jure kg is the name of the company Zure KG International Airport Company is is developing this Jewar International Airport in the Gautam Budh Nagar district. 
so this district is also in the news remember that it has been associated with badminton along with aligarh district okay then we have other important one is this hathras mein to bahut famous ek case bhi hua tha not the famous but the notorious case hathras case uh, kanauj is important kanauj ko kabaddi ke sath joda gaya hai which is a very i would say ancient sport in india traditional sport hai hamara kabaddi so kanauj and kabaddi are also important kanauj ki important because it is india's perfume capital if you have seen the thunder under the shadows web series you would have come across this a uh, fact that abhishek bachan when he goes to jail he murders his seventh head of the ravan in the jail itself in kanauj which is known as the perfume capital of india there in the court itself the people were selling perfumes and in jail itself the people were making perfumes from the rose petal if you have seen that web series now you would be able to connect both of these things okay so kanauj is the perfume capital of india now which city is the perfume capital of the world can any one of you tell me that in the comment section below i am going to wait for the answer so do provide it in the comment section now guys from here in this list in my opinion no district is that important that you would remember the sport okay so you can clearly skip this thing that wrestling has been allocated to varanasi gorakhpur chandoli bhagpat ajgarh deora and maharajganj etc etc so don't try to remember all such things but varanasi is an important city uh, important district so please remember wrestling is associated with varanasi apart from this athletics has been associated with many districts you can clearly skip and hockey also you can skip okay just remember that wrestling athletics hockey and these are the sports which have been chosen under the one district one uh, sport scheme and all the districts which i have just taught you these districts guys remain in the news so please pay attention to these districts as well okay for example i have just told you the gautam buddh nagar there jevar airport is being developed okay question number 3 which startup has won the climate thon 2022 hackathon organized by kerala so here three tag is the right answer so here three tag is also a kerala based startup only and it has won in the life on land land category this climate climate thon 2022 is a hackathon okay which was organized by the kerala startup mission So this hackathon was organized in collaboration with EY Global Delivery Services, UNDP, Startup India, Global Shapers, Kochi, Nascom, Tai, Kerala. So these are the organizations which collaborated with the Kerala Startup Mission to develop this climate thon hackathon. Okay, so that much is important from this news. Apart from this, there is a prize money of rupees five lakh. and this hackathon focused on the climate change and the theme of securing a sustainable and climate resilient future now let me tell you what are the things that you need to remember from this news we have read about it and there is nothing much that needs ex explanation it's a very basic hackathon so let's focus on the things that you need to remember first tree tag green startup from kerala so tree tag kerala climate thon which is a hackathon by kerala startup mission all the uh, words which i am circling these words are keywords so you need to focus on these keywords when you are memorizing the content from this news and then you have the life on land category theek hai then organizers mein who you who do you have to remember startup india that is an important thing that startup india has collaborated with this uh, kerala startup mission for this climate umndp theek hai then nascom एंड टाइ केरला इज ठीक है इसको भी थोड़ा याद रख लोगे तो भी कोई परेशानी नहीं होगी सो दीज आर दी वर्ड्स दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर फ्रॉम दिस न्यूज एंड जस्ट फोकस ऑन दीज की वर्ड्स एंड नथिंग एल्स क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री ओके विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेट यू टी इज ऑर्गेनाइज द फर्स्ट ऑफ इट्स काइंड ट्राइबल विंटर फेस्टिवल सो हियर जम्मू कश्मीर इज द राइट आंसर so it is basically a winter festival of the tribals uh, which was celebrated in 
Bandipura district of Jammu Kashmir. That is all. That's enough. Okay. Uh, one more thing related to Jammu Kashmir only, which I just remembered. So that thing is that delimitation commission. was created for Jammu Kashmir after the reorganization of Jammu Kashmir Act was passed in 2019 so that the number of constituencies can be decided so uh, for the legislative assembly votes. So your first question is that you need to tell me the number of constituencies which have been selected by the delimitation commission for the Jammu and Kashmir region. This is your first question and second question is that this Jammu and Kashmir Union Territory only it is going to develop a district good governance index on the basis of the good governance index that India releases. How many districts are there in Jammu and Kashmir? These are two questions that you need to answer in the comment section below. Take it as your homework, whatever you want to consider it. Take it. You will have to answer it. Okay? Next question. According to the World Bank's Latest migration and development brief 37 report India's remittances are anticipated to reach a milestone of dollar 100 billion in 2022. What would be the growth rate of remittances in the South Asian region in 2022? So here, if you were reading the question very carefully, only then you can answer it very, uh, I would say adroitly. If you have a question on the top, then you will answer it wrong. Let me tell you why. The reason is that in the first statement, the remittances of India is given. And in the next statement, the growth rate of South Asia is done. Okay. So that is why I always tell you and not only me, every mentor would recommend you to read the question carefully. So coming back to the question, what is the right answer? So the right answer is 3.5%. Okay. So this report of World Bank is a very crucial report because it tells about the remittances of different countries across the world in a particular year. Okay, so this time it was the 37th report. And what does it say? It says that India is going to touch a milestone of 100 billion in 2022. Last year we had $89.4 billion worth of remittances in 2021 now 100 billion worth of remittances are going to be there in india so this is a difference of 12 percent okay so from 2021 to 2022 you can see a difference or growth of 12 percent in india's remittances okay now there are other changes as well i'm just giving you the highlight of the report the most important fact from the report in the introduction only now, I think the introduction is over. Let's move into the report. So, first of all, this report has been released in collaboration with Nomad uh, Organization. So, remittances flows to the world. Let's look at that first. Okay, so here... So here, world, year is 2022. The world is going to witness 794 billion dollar remittances flows. Okay? Flow means one from one country the person is earning and then he or she is sending the money back to the home country for their family members and that is precisely the definition of remittance okay the money that the family members earning outside sent back to their home okay then in the low and middle income countries 626 billion dollars would be the remittances and let me also tell you the fact that for low and middle income countries, remittances play a very important role in their uh, income, you can say. However, they are not a direct part of the GDP, but yes, they play a very crucial role because the money is coming into the country and money or foreign money, you can say, can come into the country only through two mediums. Either it is through FDI or FDI or FPI or it is through your remittances. So remittances play a very major role, especially in the case of low and middle income countries. Okay, I hope this much is clear. 
नाउ लो एंड मिडिल इनकम कंट्रीज के केस में 626 बिलियन डॉलर इज गोइंग टू बी दी रेमिटेंस इन 2022 व्हिच इज अ ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ 4.9 परसेंट ओके इट इज इन द केस ऑफ लो एंड मिडिल इनकम कंट्रीज आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट द वर्ल्ड राइट नाउ ओके सो दिस मच इज क्लियर नाउ लेट्स लुक एट द वर्ल्ड so the growth rate of the world remittances would be 1.7 this much is enough for you to remember now south asia so south asia's growth rate is 3.5 and if we talk about the south asia's remittances in dollars so it would be 163 billion us dollars okay so this would be the amount of south asian remittance flow and majority of this flow would go to India, because India is going to have a dollar hundred billion worth of remittances. Okay, and then the second is Nepal. So Nepal and India are going to be the drivers of remittances and flows in the South Asian region. Okay, so do remember these percentages, the facts that I have discussed so far. Now let's discuss the facts from the slides. Okay, so. I have taught you the South Asian percentage, growth percentage, and the amount that South Asian region is going to receive through remittances in 2022. Let's discuss about India. So, guys, this is going to be the first time that a country is going to have hundred billion dollars worth of remittances, and it is really a proud moment for all of us. Now, another thing of pride for us is that this money is not coming from the low. skilled labor so okay majority of this money is coming from the high skilled labor workforce which shows that now not only the people are going out for the manual work like it had been the scenario in india people were migrating from india to the middle east for the manual labor and from there they were earning and sending money back to their hometowns now the scenario has changed now the people who are highly skilled they are also going out working out earning money there and sending it back to the country okay so this is also evident in the fact like many uh, top rank uh, you can say heads of many companies like ibm adobe and microsoft kafi sari country companies google these are now headed by indians okay so that in itself is showing that indians have the caliber and now that caliber is showing the uh, showing its true colors or it's glittering now so that would be the right sentence okay so coming back to this report high skilled labor say ye remittances are rahe hain and secondly the remittances are coming from the high income countries so historically uae used to be our major source of remittances now it has been replaced by us so now us is the top source of remittances for india out of the 100 billion dollar remittances that india is going to receive in 2022 23% of it is coming from the us itself so that shows that highly skilled labor labor is there in us and they are earning and sending money back to india so in this manner the indian workforce is uh, contributing in the world economy as well okay now let me tell you that last year the remittances were 89.4 billion dollars uh, now it has increased to 100 billion dollars so 12% is the growth rate ye bhi yaad rakhna hai this can also be asked now a change in the trend is there that is the remittances are coming from high skilled from high income countries us has replaced uae i have already taught you this thing okay mexico guys is the second top most recipient of remittances okay majority uh, of the mexican workers go to the us work there come back to their hometown or send money to their hometowns so and so forth so these things go on go on theek hai even after that you can clearly see the gap it's worth 40 billion dollars okay so here you can clearly see the expanse of indian migrants now 
India is the top most recipient. Then at the second position, we have Mexico. Third position, pe we have China. So Mexico has now in 2022 replaced China uh, from the second position. It has taken the second position and China is at the third position. Then we have Philippines and Egypt. <coughs> Egypt and Arab Republic. So these are the top most remittance receiving countries. Okay, top five. And here in this picture, what you are seeing in this graph? <coughs> uh, sorry. So this graph is telling you that the remittance is how much percentage of the GDP of these countries. Okay. For example, if the GDP is 100 rupee. Okay. Let's understand it in rupee context so that we can make the understanding. And we are receiving 50 rupee as remittance okay first of all you all of you need to understand that remittances are not included in the gdp gdp is basically our national income which we have created by producing goods and services and against the remittances we are not producing any goods and services in our own name we are producing the goods and services in the foreign land for the foreign people. Okay. For example, if uh, suppose I go to IBM work there in that country. So will that uh, work be counted as a part of the GDP? No, because I worked there for IBM in the US. So that would be a part of the US GDP. Okay. So remittances are not a part of the GDP. But what we are understanding here is that suppose 100 rupees is the GDP of a country and rupees 50 has been received as remittances in the country. So what you would say, you would say that it is 50% of GDP remittances are equivalent to 50% of the GDP. Okay. So this high worth of remittance is received by India. Okay. You would say in this, in that. Okay. I hope you are understanding this entire thing. Now let's discuss this. So Tonga had 50% um, of, uh, you can say, the GDP of Tonga and the remittances that it receives. The remittances worth is 50% of its GDP's worth. Okay. Suppose 100 rupees is the worth of Tonga's GDP. So it is receiving rupees 50 as remittance, which is almost half of its uh, equivalent to 50% of its total GDP. Okay, and similarly you can see. So what it is showing you, what's the crux of it? The crux is that the remittance play a very crucial role for these low and middle income countries, which have remittances a major as a major source of the foreign money in their land. Okay, so this is how it works. Okay, so we have read everything almost about this report. So now we are on the next question. Okay, so this is the last question of the day. Which phase of the National AIDS Control Program is under implementation at present? So here the right answer is fifth. So recently world AIDS day was observed on December 1st and the theme was equalize. That's the theme. Red is the ribbon for creating awareness about AIDS. Okay, so first I'm going to show you the ribbons. Okay, so here guys. This is the slide which is showing you different ribbons which are used for creating awareness about different diseases. For example, the red is not only used for creating awareness about AIDS, it is used for creating awareness about substance abuse, heart diseases, etc. etc. So here what is important? The important thing is that you should be aware of, first of all, that certain ribbons, certain colored ribbons are used for creating awareness for a specific disease. And secondly, the th fact is that majority of the ribbons or you can say cancer is a disease for which various colored ribbons are used if you read this uh, 
picture carefully you would find cancer in each of these colors okay apart from this various diseases are also there but cancer is the one disease which need may uh, you can say more awareness and which is very rampant across the world so you need to just pay a look you need to just look at this uh, picture and try to memorize the colors of the ribbons because that can also be asked in the examination however it has not been asked in the general awareness of rbi sebi or nabard but still in case it is asked then in my opinion it would not be a very worth deal to lose your marks even uh, even for such a small thing okay try to memorize it look at the picture again and again and you will definitely uh, try you will definitely remember it okay and sabko to yaad bhi nahi rakhna only the most important diseases which are very much in the news in the context of india for example tb malaria cancer breast cancer cervical cancer so these are some of the diseases which are very much prevalent in india and Uh, also in the world as well now let's discuss about the national aids control program of india in our knowledge nuggets so first of all aids stands for acquired immuno deficiency syndrome okay that's a full form it's a chronic disease which uh, hampers your immune system and it is uh, acquired or you can say it is uh, infected by the human human immunodeficiency virus okay hiv virus se aids hota hai ways of transmission four hi hai mother to child during pregnancy blood transmission sexual contact or infected syringes now national aids control program which was launched in 1992 so here you can clearly see the five phases of the program most important phase is the fifth phase because it is ongoing right now but you should be aware of the five phases and their launch dates the launch year at least then the target of the fifth phase because i told you the fifth phase is the most important because it is ongoing and every phase had different targets okay so the most important target for all of us is the fifth phase target so right now the target is that they want to reduce the aids related mortality that is deaths by 80% by 25 to 26 from the baseline value of 2010 so 2010 is the base year of comparison specific targets are also there that is 95% of people who are at the risk of acquiring hiv infections use comprehensive prevention that is a specific target under the phase 5 of national aids control program remember this thing because aage hum log global strategy of aids control bhi padhenge so usme bhi 95% related targets hai so you would get confused so please pay attention to this 95% of hiv positive people should know their status that they are hiv positive and at what stage they stand at okay 95% of those who know their status are on treatment and 95% of those who are on treatment have suppressed viral load so that is the second specific target under the national control aids control program phase 5 95% of pregnant and breastfeeding mothers uh, living with hiv have suppressed viral load towards attainment of elimination of vertical transmission of hiv so that it would not transmit from the mother to the child less than 10% of people living with hiv and key populations uh, experience stigma and discrimination so the target is to reduce the number of people who are facing stigma and discrimination in the society to less than 10% okay and all such targets need to be achieved by 2025 to 26 and uh, the total outlay of the phase 5 is 15471.94 crore so you can just remember 15400 crore in round figure if you remember this then you would crack the answer then it is a central sector scheme means 100% of the funding is given by the center only and these are the specific uh, modes through which this national aid control program is implemented for example national community resource groups are there state community resource groups are there district community resource groups are there so they work at the different levels to provide the awareness to provide the medicines and everything to the infected people and also take prevention measures for the people at risk 
okay so that's the implementation model now is the global aids strategy 2021 to 2026 okay that is also a very recent strategy and if we are talking about aids we need to know what is happening at the world level and at the domestic level for controlling this disease okay so its subtitle is and inequalities and that's the subtitle of this global strategy for aids now here you can clearly see we have two very extremes one is less than 10% and another one is more than 95% but on both sides we have specific targets which the un aids aim to achieve so first look at the less than 10% side so here you can see that the same to have less than 10% of the people living with hiv experience stigma and discrimination very same we had the same target in our phase 5 also and let me also inform you that the phase 5th of national aids control program is based on the global strategy only so here it's a very positive point for all the aspirants that now you would not have to cram your mind with all such specific data because the targets are taken from the global strategy only so the both of these are aligned so first we have uh, this national control program it was there in this as well then less than 10% of people living with hiv women and girls and key populations experience gender based inequalities and gender based violence okay this is the new target in this then less than 10% of countries have punitive laws and policy okay so that is another target now more than 95% side more than 95% of people at risk of hiv use combination prevention so that was also there in the national aids control program 95% uh, percent people have the hiv treatment 95% of women have access to sexual and reproductive health services 95% coverage of services for elimination eliminating vertical transmission so this we have read vertical transmission from mother to child 90% of people living with hiv receive preventive treatment for tb as well 90% of people living with hiv and people at risk are linked to other integrated health services so these are very specific targets given by the global strategy and we have read the targets given in the national strategy so that was all guys for today i hope you have enjoyed today's class in case you have any feedbacks you can provide them on this number because we have the whatsapp on this number as well so provide your feedbacks there and uh, on that note goodbye guys a very good day to all of you thank you so much for watching it